Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Doug Davis. I'm here to speak to you this evening on St. John's County in desperate need facing a financial tsunami. St. John's County is blessed with many blessings. We have the best schools, the highest rated school district in the state of Florida. We have the healthiest community and county in the state of Florida as measured by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. And finally, low unemployment, 3.2% compared to 4.2% nationwide. But with all of these blessings comes the added burden of the fastest growing county in the state of Florida and the 35th fastest growing county nationwide. And all of these new residents, while welcomed, create an increased demand on county services and the school district itself. Which is why, if we want to remain on top and be able to support the schools, the lifestyle, and the county services that put us on top, Due to historical and future cuts to revenue, potential negative impacts on county and district services, and potential harmful economic impacts to county residents and businesses, we need to increase county revenues now. So, what are some of those revenue cuts that we're looking at? Well, the first and biggest one was a recession. Starting in 2008 with the bursting of the housing bubble, and the recession that followed, it resulted in a massive loss to property values here in St. John's County. This, of course, in turn led to a tax revenue decrease from county property taxes. Property values in 2016 are still nearly $1 billion below 2007 and 2008 levels prior to the beginning of the recession and the busting of the housing bubble. The state legislative action has, has only compounded this and made it worse. Millage rates following the 2008 recession were cut, and millage rates are your property tax rates, were cut from 2% to 1.75% to 1.5% where they remain today. Over the last decade, while the county's population has continued to grow, this has resulted in a net loss of 200 $5.9 million. The budget is still $60 million less than a decade ago, again, despite the explosive population growth and the new citizens we need to support here within the county. And the school district is, is suffering the same fate. The school district alone grew 3.7% last year, but the school district's capital budget, which is what they use to build schools with, is still $11 million less in 2016 and 2017 than it was in 2007 and 2008. And we're looking at more cuts in the future. Every year since the recession, the state legislature has continued to cut millage rates to keep schools and counties revenue neutral. So as the population has gone up, as the number of students needed that we need to support has gone up, the state has cut millage rates so that revenues have remained the same. So we're trying to support more people with less money. In addition to that, in 2018, voters will be voting on a new homestead exemption ballot measure. What this was going to do is increase the homestead exemption for all the homes from $50,000 where it's currently at to $75,000. If that passes, then starting in 2020, we'll be looking at a potential $10 million annual loss in revenue for the county alone. So what impacts on services will this have? Well, first and foremost, again, starting in the 2008 with the recession and the loss in revenue, the county had to cut costs somewhere. They did this by cutting back on needed maintenance and future projects. So at present, that's resulted in a $320 million maintenance backlog. As a part of that is a stormwater project. That's a $45 million stormwater infrastructure project that was supposed to alleviate repeated downtown flooding. Now, prior to the last two hurricanes and the flooding that we've gotten, where at this point, the downtown floods with a spring shower, at the time this was started, it was simply a want. But as we all know, that has now turned into a need. But we simply don't have the revenue to support it. In addition, this would lead to cuts in programming, such as libraries, parks, recreation services, 
all the things that, again, make this the number one destination in Florida to move to. In addition to that, we would be looking at cuts in things like road maintenance. Remember I said that increasing the homestead exemption would lead to a loss of $10 million per year for the county. Well, our current road maintenance budget is $10.5 million per year. So imagine living in a county where no potholes get fixed, no repaving happenings, and none of the infrastructure is, is rebuilt, much less new roads to support all the new citizens. And of course, the same thing's happening with schools. As of right now, the northern end of the county has already approved and is projected to build 23,722 homes over the coming decade. This is going to lead to potentially 14,233 new school kits, which means we will going to need to build 14 new schools for a total cost of $280 million, none of which we have the money for. This is leading to school overcrowding. Some schools in the northern end of the county are overcrowded by, at, over their capacity by a few hundred kids, some as many as a thousand. Economic impacts. Well, our economy is based on the schools and lifestyle that we provide to the residents who live here. But again, being the number one fastest growing county, it's based on the fact that our school district is the number one in the state of Florida. But if the school rankings start to fall and the services in the county start to get cut, well, houses in St. John's County cost $300,000 on median or average compared to Duval County's $160,000. So if at some point St. John's County schools fall to a level that they are equal to Duval, Duval County schools, then Duval County will start to look like a much better and much more affordable option. The school district itself is the largest employer in the county at 4,534 employees. The next largest is just 1,500. The county has no other industry other than tourism. So again, the county's entire economic engine rests on faith in the school district and the housing boom. One crack in that, and the whole bubble could burst. For these reasons, again, historical and future cuts to potential revenue, negative impacts on county and district services, and harmful economic impacts on county residents and di businesses, we need to immediately implement new funding sources of revenue for St. John's County. Thank you.